Hello students, welcome back. I hope you remember what I taught you in the last session. Do you remember? Okay, let's have a quick recap what we learned last time, right? Okay, I hope you remember that uh, I told you the two important concepts that are going to come in this chapter. The first concept was about the word agriculture, right? The agriculture is nothing but cultivation of soil and rearing of animals, right? Rearing of animals for food, we can say, and other product that we get from animals, okay? The next word was very important which is actually dealing with this particular chapter crop crop is what if same kinds of plants are grown or cultivated at one place on large scale right one place on large scale the next thing that we learned in the in the last session was about the cropping pattern there are two cropping pattern broadly in India, the Kharif and the Rabi, right? The Kharif is the rainy season crop that is from June to September, which needs the plants that needs more water, right? Example was pear, paddy, maize, etc. Paddy, again, rice, okay? Next is Rabi, that is winter season crop, October to March, and plant those require less amount of water as compared to the curry crop, right? That wheat, gram, pea, etc. The last one thing that I explained to you was about the uh, pulses and vegetables that are grown in the summer season, right? I think so you all remember what I taught you last time. Okay, now let's start with the this uh, session. Now, before I start, I want to ask you a simple question, children. Uh, if I ask you, do you prepare for your exams? You will say, yes, ma'am, we prepare for our exams. And what is the result if you do proper preparation? Yes, you get good marks, you get good grades if you prepare well, right? So if you want to get or score good marks, you have to prepare well for your exam. Similarly, even the farmer, if he wants to get bumper crop, he, if he wants to get good yield, he has to prepare his land properly following different steps. Means he has to do certain activities so that he gets a good crop. Are you getting it what I'm saying? So, this task, different tasks that or activities that he does in his field so that he gets a bumper crop, these are called as agriculture practices. What they are called? Agriculture practices. And there are altogether seven different steps that the farmer has to actually do this activity so that he gets a proper yield, right? So what are those seven activities or practices that he has to do that we are going to study in this chapter, right? So one by one, I'll explain you all these activities. Now, first activity is preparation of soil. He has to prepare his soil properly, right? How he prepares his soil by plowing, tilling, I'll be explaining later. Yes, the first thing is preparation of soil. The next is sowing. He has to select proper seeds and he has to sow them properly, right? Next, the third step is adding manure and fertilizer. Once he sows the seed, the seed should grow healthier. And for that, he has to add manure and fertilizer. Or next is, after adding that manure and fertilizer, he needs to water the plants or he needs to give, irrigate his land, right? So that is irrigation. 
the fifth one is protection from weeds what happens is sometimes different types of plants which are unwanted plants we can say they grow in the field which uh, actually are not required to grow because they eat the nutrients of the actual crop so these weeds are to be removed that is protection from weeds next is sixth step is harvesting means once the crop is grown properly the farmer has to harvest it right remove that crop and once he the farmer harvest it the last step is called as storage he has to store it properly right so it will uh, the grain should not damage or whatever crop he is he has uh, got it should not be damaged right so these are the several steps that farmer has to take now we are going to study today the first step right so uh, let's have a recap first that is preparation of soil sowing adding manure and fertilizer irrigation protecting from weed harvesting and last is storage okay so today we are going to deal with the first one first step that is preparation of soil now as i said the farmer has to prepare his soil means what he has to do he has to make sure that if the soil is dry he need to lose that soil loosen that soil now how this uh, soil can be loosened by tilling or by plowing i think so you might have seen this uh, like this picture many time right the farmer plowing the field with the help of an ox or a pair of a bull right so the farmer does this process of loosening the soil and this process is called as tilling or plowing right now if he is doing this there might be some advantages behind plowing this field yes so let's see what are the advantages that the farmer gets by plowing the field right now uh, the first thing as i told you if the soil is very dry and if the farmer has loosens the soil if the so seeds are sown what will happen the roots can easily go into the soil or penetrate into the soil and if the roots go deep into the soil they can absorb the nutrients they can absorb water and there will be air which will make which will allow the roots to breathe properly right so when the farmer loosens the soil the roots can penetrate deep into the soil and also it allows the root to breathe easily that is we call it as it provides good aeration air is provided properly to the roots right then it retains moisture for longer period means if the soil is loosened what will happen the moisture remains in the soil for longer period which is good for the crops right next uh, when the soil is loosened or turned what happens is all the different unwanted pest which are there in the soil they are exposed and there are different natural predators like birds they feed on these insects and so the crop can be protected right then the next thing is when the farmer uh, does plowing what happens is unwanted plants weeds which are there in the field they get uprooted and this is again a advantage of plowing right now plowing also promotes a good microorganism or useful microorganisms now if i talk about good microorganism or useful microorganism we are going to study in detail about this in the next chapter here you remember that what are the useful microorganisms which are not 
harmful to us, which are beneficial to us. Like for example, if I give you your example of idli or dosa, which your mother prepares, uh, it is uh, due to the fermentation and this fermentation process is carried out because of the microorganism. So they are good for us. Yes, because they ferment our food and fermented food is very good, right? So uh, these are the useful microorganism. If the food gets spoiled because of the microorganisms, then those microorganisms are harmful microorganisms or when you fall sick due to some uh, microorganisms so they are harmful micro okay we'll study about this in detail in the next chapter so remember here that what happens is dosing of the soil promotes the growth of the useful microorganism the next very important thing that uh, i think so you all know that earthworm which are called as the friends of the farmer these earthworms are you know that they produce what humus right and you have studied what is humus in the lower grasses yes yes last year also in uh, seventh standard you studied soil chapter in which you studied about humus what is humus right so humus is nothing but an organic matter in the soil it is made up of dead parts of plants and animals right and it is rich in nutrients it is having a lot of nutrients which helps the plant growth or it enhances the uh, growth of the plant because it has a lot of nutrients right and the soil quality is increased because of this now it also the plowing also brings all the nutrient rich soil to the top and you all know that the topmost layer of the soil actually helps in growth of the plant right so these are few advantages of plowing the field and that's the reason why the farmer plows the field okay now I hope you understood this. Now let's go for the next part that is leveling of land. Now uh, children, why the land is leveled? Where what happens is, as I told you, when the soil is dried and plow, the farmer plows the field, sometimes the big, uh, what we can say, pieces of mud comes out and these are called as crumbs. What they are called? Crumbs. Now, these uh, are to be broken down properly so that, you know, the, ploy, the sowing activity as well as irrigating that is giving water to the crop, that activity can be done properly, right? So, it is the land is leveled properly with the help of a wooden plank or an iron leveler, right? And this process is called as leveling of the land. Sometimes what farmer does is when he is doing this work of leveling and plowing, he adds little manure also, right? And uh, because of which what happens, the manure gets easily mixed into the soil properly. He also waters the uh, field so that what happens is the soil becomes a little softer, right? So these are the things what, what, which the farmer does during the time of leveling the land. Now, I uh, am, I, as you know that when the farmer is doing these all activities, he is using different types of tools or we can say implements, right? Now. In this chapter, we are going to study these tools and implements which actually the farmer uses. Like when I said that farmer plows the field. Now when he's plowing the field, what he's doing? He's using a plow, right? So this plow can be of a wood, it can be of iron also. So this is a tool which is used by the farmer. The other tool which is used by the farmer is the hoe. And the last is nowadays which modern cultivator which has been used, right? So in this chapter, we are going to study these two, uh, sorry, three uh, different implements or we can say different tools used by the farmer one by one. Okay, now let's go for the first one that is a plow. Now when I say plow, 
flow has actually uh, many time uh, two marks or one mark question is asked to draw the label diagram of flow in exam right so this flow has actually uh, we can say three different parts and there are uh, actually four labelings for this flow now the first part you can see this triangular part is there this triangular part is called as flow of share there is an handle uh, which uh, the farmer holds the handle right and the log you can see this wooden it can be of a wooden or it can be a iron it is called as flow of share then you can see the horizontal structure or a rod we can say beam it's called as beam which is actually placed on the neck of a bull or an ox so you can see there are four labelings important labelings are three that is beam flow shaft and flow share and the handle okay so these are the uh, labelings for this particular diagram and many time it comes in exam to draw this diagram so let's see the flaw in detail it contains a strong triangular iron strip called as flaw share yes flaw share where is flaw share here in the picture this is flaw share right now next the main part of the flaw is a long log of wood which is called as flaw shaft yes flaw shaft this is called as flaw shaft now there is an handle at one end of the shelf as i told you the farmer holds that handle in his hand and the other end is attached to the beam which is placed on the bull's neck okay now one pair of bull and a man can easily operate this plow nowadays indigenous uh, wood wooden plow is nowadays what replaced with the help with the iron flow right so this is about the flow i am children sharing a video in which you will see the farmer flowing the field and you will get the clear idea actually how the flow works so please watch this video and then come back to my lecture okay so please watch this video i am sharing the link to you please watch this video okay i think so you have seen the video and understood how actually the plow work now the next tool which the farmer use is a hoe what it is called a hoe actually this hoe is used for removing the weeds many a time right can you see this uh, uh, iron bend plate this goes deep into the soil and uproots the unwanted weeds like the plow there is a rod here this rod can you see it can be made up of uh, wood or it can be of a uh, iron also then here is a beam yes this beam is as we have a uh, horizontal even in the plow we had which is placed on the neck of a bull uh, uh, of a ox or a bull same way we have a beam here right now there is a handle and a grip also handle yes here handle is there and a grip is also present right so this also picture many times diagram comes to draw for two or one or two marks draw diagram of a hoe okay it is a simple tool which is used for removing the weeds and loosening the soil as i told you prior right and it has a long rod of wood or iron a strong rod and bend plate of iron is fixed at the end which actually goes into deep into the soil it's like a blade which you know cuts the 
or uproots the weed right it is pulled by animals or even by machines like tractor right so this is an four now i am sharing one more link in which you will see the farmer using the hoe in the field right if when you watch this video you will get a clear idea actually how the farmer uh, works with the hoe in the field okay so watch this video properly and come back okay i hope you have seen that video and understood how actually the hoe works now the last one is the modern cultivator actually the modern cultivator is nowadays used by the farmers huh? so it is act, dr driven by an a tractor and if you see this uh, modern cultivator you will see this is the cultivator which is having so many blades right and actually because of this what happens is this saves the labor and time of the farmer and that is why among uh, the farmers this is becoming more and more popular because the farmer's time and labor is saved right so he can easily do it in less time more cultivation right that's why it has become more and more popular okay i hope you have understood uh, this now i am sharing a simple link with in which you will get to see it's quite interesting to watch how the cultivator actually works right in the farm the farmer is using the cultivator so please watch this video and then come back to my class okay i hope you have seen that video now uh, as i said what we learned in this particular session there are seven basic practices that the farmer has to follow which are the they are like preparation of soil sowing adding manure and fertilizer irrigation crop production uh, that is we have to remove the weeds right removing the weeds then harvesting and last is storage so these are the step that the farmer has to follow when he is preparing his field for getting proper crop yes now i am sure sharing an interesting link which will show actually how the farmer does the work of plowing and how he prepares his land properly right so please watch that video and come back to my class okay i hope you have seen the video link okay was it interesting yes now let's come back now in the first session i told you that we are going to start a uh, we are going to do lot of activities right yes so we will start with the activities the first activity in this chapter is start my own kitchen garden right interesting excited yes i know you all are excited to start your own kitchen garden so you are going to start your own kitchen garden this is this activity is just not for the fun it is sake of uh to find out whether you have understood whatever the steps we are teaching you to do right in agriculture practices what are steps we are going to do that same steps we are going to follow for this kitchen garden project now the thing is this is not for fun you uh, have to do it very seriously because these uh, this particular activity carries marks It means you will be given marks for this activity right i hope you are getting it what i am saying so no excuses you can take help of anyone from your family and start your kitchen garden now minimum you have 
to i am saying minimum you have to grow five different plants it can be a small herbs it can be spices it can be any vegetable right very easy growing vegetable you can grow right now if you might come up with a different query saying that ma'am we don't have place we don't have seeds or we don't have pots i am going to sort all these queries right i am going to share different links which will make you understand how to start right now for your simple query about i don't have place can you see this in the balcony very small place easy growing right next you can see you can do it as a hanging very easy to grow you know in the uh, small hanging pots next if you don't have pots plastic bags solution right next plastic bottles can you see this spring onion this is what is this you know what is this this is ginger oh my god it is it interesting yes and you people are going to do this even our window sill this see such a small place can you see how beautifully it is growing yes easy to grow what is this it's spinach right and different herbs oh so easy yes you can do it nothing is there is a no word like impossible in my dictionary and it should not be in your dictionary also right so nothing is impossible everything is possible if you decide to do it yes and my children are going to do it so you're going to be graded for this you're going to score marks right so ready yes ready to do it right now i am sharing a uh, very interesting videos uh, links wherein you will get the idea how to start your garden right so please watch those videos uh, the first one is for the beginners how you will start about the next video is how to grow tomatoes from your mother's kitchen you can get one tomato and how you can easily grow that tomato isn't it interesting excited oh then mint i think so even mint mint is available easily yes from the green grocer you can get this milk mint and how you can easily grow okay it can be grown in a plastic bag also right then spinach easy to grow right if your seeds are not available even if you get, your mother gets the spinach from uh, from the market you can cut the upper part and how you can regrow that this is the video link which i am sharing and there are many more things easy seeds available in the kitchen that is you know you can get the seeds of fenugreek you can get the seeds of coriander and many 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 things right so easy and you can do it right so everyone is going to do this project at the end you are uh, you're going to click the photographs of every activity that you do in your kitchen garden means you have to just check now first is preparation of soil so today you have to start with your kitchen garden in preparing the soil you have to click the photograph related to that when you come back to school you have to submit your project file right with photograph and information i hope you have understood what i have told you yes done clear with the act activity okay even if you have any kind of query you can ask me uh, in the online class right now before i end up let's have a quick recap what we learned in this particular session what was the first point that we learned the 
agriculture practices there are many agriculture practices or steps that the farmer has to follow how many steps are there there are seven steps out of that which we studied today the first step what was that preparation of soil what is done in preparation of soil plowing the farmer plows the soil because of that what happens the soil gets loosened and when the soil is loosened it has many advantages right and because of that the farmer gets a proper yield because the soil gets rich nutrients it whatever pest or unwanted plants are there they are removed and you know good microorganisms are increased water holding capacity increases and many more advantages right so this was what we learned then next was the different tools that the farmer uses or we can say different implements agriculture implement first was was, was yes plow second was hoe and the last one was yes cultivator very good and then the exciting part of this session yes to grow your own veggies that is start your own kitchen garden which is a project carrying marks excited yes even i am excited to see your kitchen garden okay so all the best for your project right and bye bye and see you soon yes okay bye